Nick, here. Toman, here. Gail, here. Guzikowski. Here. Can everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? And would our fire chief please lead us? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three is the approval of the minutes from 11-5-19. Everybody, please take a look. If there's no errors, omissions, or questions, motion. Kowski, make a motion to approve the minutes of November 5th, 2019. Lorical second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Item four is a public hearing concerning the 2020 executive draft budget. Catherine, would you please read that in? Certainly. Public hearing number one is for the 2020 proposed executive draft budget. Notice is hereby given that on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019, the Common Council of the City of Oak Creek will meet in the Civic Center Council Chambers at 8040 South 6th Street, 7 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the 2020 proposed executive draft budget. The purpose of the public hearing is to solicit public comment on the city's 2020 annual property tax levy and budget. A summary of the 2020 proposed executive draft budget is published herewith, and public notice is hereby given that the pub budget detail is available for public inspection at the city's clerk's office at the Oak Creek Civic Center, 8040 South 6th Street, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, during the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. The proposed water and sewer utility proprietary fund budget is not included in this notice. The Water and Sewer Utility Commission is expected to review the proposed budget at their regular meeting on Tuesday, November 12th, 2019, dated this 23rd day of October 2019. Thank you. Before we open the <clears throat> public hearing, uh, Bridget, would you like to give us a synopsis of the 2020 budget, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. So we'll dive right into the general fund and review a brief um, revenue summary. If you look at our 2020 budget, you will see that we have a 4% increase over the 2019 budget for revenues. That's roughly $976,000 more than last year. This is due mainly to an increase in our allocation of the tax levy towards the general fund. The most notable adjustments in the detail of the general fund summary would be a decrease of about $90,000 in our general transportation aids. So that was the state aid surprise that we had early on in this process. We also see a $60,000 increase in our building permit fee revenue, a $65,000 increase in interest on investments, as that's something that the market has picked up, so we are able to increase that income, and a $40,000 increase in our TIF administration costs to the general fund. Shifting to the general fund expenditures, again, we have a balanced budget, so that means your expenditures increased by 4% as well, going 2020 over 2019 budget. We maintained the 2019 service levels with minimal personnel changes as we enter in the 2020 budget. So the city continues to be fiscally responsible and prudent stewards of the tax dollars. A little more detail about the items that are included in your proposed budget. As I mentioned, we maintained our service levels from last year and we have a balanced general fund. Additionally, we funded 2.6 million in capital expenditures in this budget. We have a replacement of two part-time police mechanics into one full-time, and then a reduction in a part-time staff in the library, which brought on two part-time library aides. So that's a net cost of 55,000. We allocated, if you remember, $113,000 and change towards the police department budget to assist in the pre-hiring when we have the number of officers set to retire as we do looking forward to these upcoming years. Additionally, the budget includes wage adjustments for all employees. We also saw a large increase of 114,000 in our refuse and recycling collection, which is in Fund 11, our solid waste, but that's an additional allocation of our tax levy that went towards that. 
All of the other funds that are supported by tax levy are also balanced, and this budget does include a $2 increase of the stormwater fee from $37 to $39. Focusing a little deeper on some of the large cost centers that are in this budget, we had a $10,000 increase in building maintenance in our general government, $59,000 for annual license fees as we continue to work on technology, technology being the center of what we do and how we do some of our business, that has an increase in our license fees annually. We saw an $8,400 increase in salt for the snow and ice removal. And then um, we also saw a $20,000 increase in our license fees for Milwaukee County dealing with our public safety communications. So since our last council workshop, there were actually very minimal adjustments that had to be made or were made to the budget. As you're normally aware, we end up getting the final expenditure restraint percentage from the state right before you know, we end up coming to this meeting. So there were just a couple um, slight change. I think I had 3.83% is what I was using for expenditure restraint during our budget workshop that came in at 39 So there's a very slight tweak to our revenue offset number and then our contingency line item in the general fund budget. And then if you remember, there was a question about an expenditure line item in the dispatch fund for annual license fees. There was a double count for it in two different funds. So dispatch was reduced by 11,000, um, which tweaked the tax levy. Taxes. So <laughs> this is looking at our tax levy. For the city, we looked at a $835,000 increase in our levy. That includes our net new construction percentage of 3.73%, in addition to the personal property age shift, which was an add-on from last year's state budget. So again, that was just a shift, but new money into the tax levy was 835000 so below here, you see the total levy is $21,532,906. And you can see how it's broken out between general fund, EMS, solid waste, debt service, and dispatch. This is just a visual showing how that allocation is set percentage-wise with the general fund receiving the largest amount of 66%. Projected city tax rate. I always caution every year when I'm looking at this that this is an estimate. We do not have all of our data. We do not have all of the numbers. The city treasurer's office will ensure that this is completed and correct. But to give you an idea of where we are at with this budget and this tax levy, I have this estimate ahead of you, or in front of you, rather. So again, looking at our $21 million levy, that would set us with a projected or estimated tax rate of $6.27. That is three cents less than last year. <laughs> so the whopping $6 annually <laughs> of, a, of a reduction. Um, but as we look at this, you know, we continue to analyze what the city's services are on a $200,000 home. So the city portion only, the $6.27, would equate to an annual tax bill of $1,254. In addition, it is very notable or worth noting that our assessed value increased 7.73%. That's a significant amount for um, assessed value. And last year, we were up 5%. So that continued growth is positive in the tax rate reduction that you're seeing here. So taking that concept of, you know, how, do you, how much do you pay a month in your cable bill? How much do you pay a month for, for your cell phones with your family household? If you take that 1,254 annual city portion of that tax bill and divide it out per month, it's $104.50. So, for the high level of services that our residents receive, I think this is a very good cost for those services. 
and I just took all of our budgeted information and broke it down into this monthly rate so that you can see for fire and EMS services, the typical resident will pay $22.73 a month. For police and dispatch, $30.77 um, and on down the line. So I just think it's really important and powerful to look at it in this perspective when you think of all the services that we provide. So the strategic plan initiatives that we have included in this budget with some of the capital expenditures that have been approved, we are adding some additional funding to our safe routes to schools. So that would fall under safe, welcoming, and engaged community. We did quite a bit of work under quality infrastructure amenities and services by funding a replacement of the play structures at both Riverton Meadows and Manor Marquette Parks. Additionally, we funded the replacement of the skate park. We have continued funding for bridge maintenance repair to set that money aside so that we uh, do not have to have a large bond like we've had a couple years ago for bridge repair. And then we completed our phase two of the fleet leasing for Enterprise with our DPW vehicles. So again, I want to thank everybody for their time throughout this process and for all of their contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. As we started out, this is a public hearing. We will make three calls. Anybody wishing to speak, please approach the podium. Give your name and address. This will be the first call. Second call. Anyone wishing to speak, please approach the podium. Third and final call of tonight's public hearing. We'll now close the public hearing and go on to item five, which is an ordinance adopting the 2020 budget. Now open it up to the council for questions. Comments? Steve. Alderman Krakowski, First District. Um, thank you, Bridget, for, for the presentation. We, you know, about seven years ago when I started this process, it was, uh, it was quite mind boggling, but each year it gets a little bit easier. And um, it is important to note that the, uh, the taxes you pay are the, the city-only portion. I mean, every year when the tax bills go out, we get the complaints that the, you know, our, our taxes went up or they went down, and a lot of that has to do with the tax levy and the value of the, of the property. But uh, whether there's a half a dozen or so different uh, taxing jurisdictions, and um, they all play a part in that tax bill. So, yes. I pay my monthly uh, AT&T bill, and it's much more than $104 a month. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just for you, Bridget, and you, Andrew, and the rest of your staff, just wanted to commend you on a very seamless process. I know you guys do have a great deal of work and a lot of effort put into it, so it's, uh, it's heartening to see a, a very seamless process and a relatively pain-free process. I know growth makes that a little easier. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know some of the decisions we all have made that have made that uh, a little more uh, likely to happen. So we appreciate the effort and want to commend you on a great budget. So that's all. Else, Mike, anything? I just wanted to point out this is uh, two probably one of my favorite uh, representations that you bring up every year, and I think it's worthwhile because uh, we're going to start getting the calls, and uh, it's really helpful. And uh, we can always just direct them in the right. There's so many resources that they can get the information from now. So um, I appreciate all the work that everyone has done. Andrew? Just to add to that, um, of course, thank you to all the staff. You know, I, I, my role in this whole deal is penning the messaging and the letter of transmittal and everything else like that and, and kind of fitting the puzzle pieces for the years and the councils and the mayor's priorities and trying to use those. But really, that's, that's the fun stuff for me. I like doing that, but the labor is crunching the Getting the bids, talking with your CMS staff, talking with the people, getting to understand their needs. So that's really the labor of this whole deal. So I just commend everybody for the work and the staff and whoever had a hand in putting together this whole thing. Uh, but just to Chris's point, um, at the end of this process, through the uh, month of, of the beginning of December, what we do then is we go in with that large budget document and we work to get the strategic plan initiative to really demonstrate the, that value. 
starts with the dollar bill insert, uh, the, the tax bill insert that the city council has approved for. Is that off? Sorry. It starts with the tax bill insert from the city treasurer's office, and then we do the dollar bill graphic. We get that out on social media. So we really try to hammer home to Alderman Kurkowski and Alderman Guzikowski's point that, you know, on, a, on an average home, 104 bucks a month for city services. You know, you can't get cable for that nowadays, and, and you're getting a library, you're getting a police department, you're getting a fire department, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So really uh, fantastic community, very high quality of life, and, and as we will demonstrate, you know, continuing to be among the, the lowest, you know, one, two, or three communities in terms of the local government jurisdiction's tax burden, uh, I envision that we will be there in that positioning again this year. So uh, thanks to the council and the mayor for, for your support through the budget process. Uh, Rich, you got anything? Nothing, Greg? Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just add my two cents. I mean, uh, management staff and, and finance has been all thanked. Uh, the budget only works because of the people that are here hourly in all our departments. Everybody from streets to, to library to health to all the departments, um, they make it go. They understand their jobs. They understand the parameters they're working in. And it's tough. We have been in a growth mode, but... Actually, this budget is laid out rather conservatively. Um, we take into effect we won't be in a growth mode forever. We're not taking that for granted. So uh, we budget for the future. Uh, we ask our managers to take that and convey the message. Uh, we've done a number of things to try to be responsible, and I think we've done a very good job with it. I think this is a very responsible budget. Uh, I want to thank everybody, but more importantly, really the staff out there, they're the people that make it meet that make the ends meet. They understand how to do their jobs, and they're very efficient at it. Uh, and Andrew said it, we have a high quality service here, and just like to thank the staff for that. Um, we can put it together, but to make it work, it's really the people that are employed at the city of Oak Creek that make that happen. So thank you managers, thank you staff. So, with that, um, motion on five. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, we'll move to approve Ordinance 2954 adopted in the 2020 budget and making <coughs> appropriations. Music calls Gail second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Item six. Um, it's consideration of a charter ordinance 15 relating to the manner and selection of the city clerk and the city treasurer for the city of Oak Creek. Uh, Andrew. Would you like to give us a little bit of a synopsis? Sure, I can introduce that. Uh, I know council's aware um, we've kind of been having this discussion and strategizing around this uh, as, as you know as late as our as, as long ago as our strategic action plan. So uh, what we're doing uh, this evening is consideration of the way we select the clerk and treasurer positions. Currently, the city of Oak Creek has elected clerk and elected treasurer positions, and we are looking to provide a little more stability, a little more consistency moving forward with how uh, those positions function within the organization by making them appointed uh, rather than an elected role. Uh, as uh, pointed out in the uh, staff report, you know, we are really among a, a, a waning few communities, very few. Uh, I only counted two communities within the 20 to 40,000 po population range that uh, hang on to uh, the this I believe archaic way of of selecting the the clerk and treasurer roles in, in local government, and um, and to to that point, only uh, the city of Cudahy and all of Milwaukee County, one community remaining in Milwaukee County has an elected clerk, and that person happens to be a, an elected clerk treasurer. So they've combined that over time as well. So Oak Creek, we always like to tout ourselves as as being a leading community uh, that that we uh, hope. Others look to, we're actually a little bit dialed back and we're a little bit behind the times on making this change because the trend has been the local governments in Wisconsin have, have come to know that it takes professional competencies, professional knowledge, skills, and abilities in these roles to really do the technical work that it, that's involved. You need to know how to do this, uh, whether that is the integrity of elections, whether we, we we're just talking about you know, the budgeting and, and making sure the correct tax rate goes out on the tax bill. I mean, those are very important functions, and that's only just the, probably the, the very most critical ones. Uh, there's a lot of work that uh, the, the 
clerk and treasurer do for the community. So with that, uh, I will uh, answer any questions. I have uh, s some other information I could certainly provide, but really this action is about stability, it's about consistency, and it's about integrity with this work. And we have very competent people right now in these roles, and this uh, hopefully is a, a measure in which we can ensure that those professional competencies continue with them in their tenure with the city of Oak Creek, uh, but also beyond when we do have to eventually replace people in, in those roles. Um, so with that, I don't know if there's any, any questions from the mayor or council at this point, but I can certainly be prepared and, uh, and answer any of those. Before we do, we have a resident that would like to speak on the subject. Mark, you want to come on up? How you doing, Mark? You know the deal. Name and address. Mark for Halen, 9330 South Nicholson, Roto Creek. A um, few comments, I guess. Um, Andrew pretty much wrapped it up as far as why we want to go to uh, um, appointed position versus elected. Um, as some of you know, this question is not the first time it's, it's come up here in Oak Creek. We addressed it a couple times in the past. Um, always chose to go back with the elected official part of it. Um, and I think to look into the future, I guess, the way we want to have these people fit into the big mix here. We don't want anything to, to really change. And I think um, going back to, to somebody that's left Oak Creek now, he lives in Flint, Michigan, but Arden Degner was always one of the guys that always made sure that um, to voice his opinion on especially things like this. And I think the main thing I'd like to see is going forward is <clears throat> checks and balances in, in government. And I don't think there's anybody up on the council or the mayor or anybody that runs a department here that doesn't believe in checks and balances in government. And um, it's one of the things that ensures that um, there's honesty, integrity in the employees and the way departments are run now and into the future. And as Andrew said, we've got outstanding employees, we've got outstanding department heads. Andrew's come here, he's done a wonderful job as city administrator. and. I don't have any problem with going to uh, having these positions appointed, but there's one thing that struck me, and it's nothing against Andrew or anybody else in the city, but I'd like to see um, these positions, or at least one of the other positions that are involved with city finance, answer to the mayor and council rather than the city administrator, because we're putting everything in one basket, and the city administrator, and comptroller and everybody else here is not a permanent fixture forever. And when you get complacent and you have a lot of money involved in whatever, and Oak Creek had a problem with a past employee with um, taking money out of the coffers here, and you don't want to be lackadaisical when it comes to checks and balances with our finance. So my suggestion would be I don't have a problem with uh, taking and making these positions appointed, but I would like to see them answer to um, the mayor and the council rather than to the city administrator. Separates things out, gives you a better way to do checks and balances. Thanks. Thank you for those comments, Mark. Appreciate that. Um, again, we can take it into consideration, but I think Andrew kind of laid it out. Um, you know, the responsible thing to do is move forward with this to protect the citizens of Oak Creek, not just now, but going forward. So. Maybe one thing in response to that, Mayor, uh, you know, folks don't know this that, that don't you know, involve themselves as much or concern themselves or educate themselves on local matters, which is a, which is a lot of folks. We're all busy and we have stuff to do on the on the weekends with the kids and, and whatnot and our own hobbies. But um, the the these are while they function as full time employees of the city, really, in, in day, on a daily basis in city hall, they're department managers, right? Even today, that's really the practicality of it all. Uh, they are still statutory officers of the city of any city. They're, they're statutory officers, they have specified duties, they are the clerk and they are the treasurer. That's why I, I, I started with, we can't, we wouldn't want to, nor can we abolish these positions. These are statutory requirements to have somebody fulfill those duties in that title. And, uh, and in keeping with that, the statutes also provide that the manner of selection, as well as the manner of removal rests with the mayor and the common council. So I know that's maybe not to the nth degree what, what Mark was talking about, but ultimately 
the city administrator, I'm not, I'm not a city manager, that's very different. The city administ administrator does not have the authority to remove uh, or, or you know, terminate these, these folks. That does still rest with you. So again, I know that's not probably exactly what uh, Mr. Verhillen was, was getting at, but uh, you know, I think, I think honest you know, supervision uh, and strategic direction on a, on a daily or you know, frequent basis is, is important in terms of accountability at City Hall. Uh, comments, Steve? Alderman Krakowski, 1st District. Um, Andrew, I agree with, with, with all that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've had a number of calls and emails about this, this process, and what I tried to relate to some of the people that I talk to is that these, as we all know, these jobs have evolved into very complex positions over the years. But, you know, if, if the current... City Treasurer, if Barb decides to not run for re-election, let's just say, and we don't do any changes, her, her job is so complex, she, she, she has all this experience and this training and stuff, but we could get a cashier from some store run unopposed for City Treasurer. And that just, that would present a big problem, I think, to the city, because then we have somebody who you know, only has to only wants to show up once or twice a year because they're they're elected. So I think this provides a an awesome amount of accountability, and we're blessed that we have two individuals that are here forty plus hours a week. They don't have to be here, but because the job is so complex, they are here. And with regards to checks and balances, Mark, I we we have that yearly audit that is conducted by an outside firm. I think if there's going to be any issues with regards to um, how we invest our money and how we conduct business, I think that audit's going to show us a little bit of potential problems. And as I explained to this person on the phone, the, the people who are appointed, he was hung up with the term appointed. And I says, well, I know we appoint the fire chief. We, app we appoint police officers. We appoint, it's just a term we use. They're going to be hired, city employees. Um, but if they mess up, the city administrator is going to be watching their duties. The city administrator answers to us. So if we, have a pro if we hear there's a problem with somebody, I mean, the city administrator is going to be dealing with it. We're going to be dealing with it. I think, I think those fears are are not there. And I think this is a long overdue um, idea. And um, I know there were a couple other things I wanted to say to support this, but I didn't write them down. But I think it's a great idea. And it's, like I said, long overdue. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District. And Mark, I certainly understand your, your concern and your point. Um, I guess w what I would bring is that Andrew certainly has a very good line of communication with the mayor and the council. Uh, being a rookie older person, I can't speak to what previous administrations had done, what previous uh, city administrators had done in regard to communicating between departments, but I know that that communication now is incredibly good. Uh, so Andrew, thank you for that. I, I know it's been a point in our uh, review and assessment of your performance to ask you to, to improve communication on all city matters between your department, uh, all other city departments, and the council, and that's happened without a doubt. So uh, the, the communication, Mark, where it may not have been there years ago is certainly there, and there is an openness. And I would say if, if the council is not aware of, of some things that are going on, then it's our own fault for not being aware. I think the, the line of information that uh, that Andrew provides to us is, is solid. Thank you, Rich. Anyone else? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, I am. Uh, I think Dan, you and Westy know that I've long believed and, uh, and advocated for that these positions should be appointed rather than elected. I think we are blessed, as Steve said, to have two folks with the professionalism and the compassion and the passion to carry out their duties as they have. Uh, but you are not, uh, you are unfortunately not guaranteed that through an election process. I think the, these roles have evolved to the point where 
to assure the city and, and put the city in, in the best place moving forward when these when these roles do transition that the appointed process is the way to go to make sure that the qualifications are there that, that the expertise and experience are there to make sure that the city can move forward and when these do when these roles do transition I think this, this is uh, as Steve said long overdue I think it's the right process and it's the right way to go the only thing I'll add is it's the continuity that this adds and, and again it's long overdue so I, uh, I look for, forward to uh, a lot of success for that. No? Sure, come on, Mark. Come on up. I guess um, a few of you maybe missed the point uh, that I was up here to make. And Rich, you, you just got done saying the same thing I said. You know, I, I have nothing but respect for our current city administrator, the way he handles the business, uh, uh, daily business of the city and, and the departments and everything else. He's doing a great job. But that's not going to be the status quo forever. You know, and my point was, you know, and you can look, there's, there's incidents that happen probably on a monthly basis in Wisconsin and everywhere else where somebody gets caught dipping into the cookie jar, whether it's a church or a school or, and it's always the person that everyone thinks is the most honest and the most, you know, up, uh, upstanding pillar of the community. So that was my point. No matter who is here, checks and balances are really important, especially when it comes to the finances and stuff in the city. And to reiterate, we had an incident here a number of years ago, and it wasn't that far back, where we had people dipping into the cookie jar. And thankfully, we've got Barb here. I think she was the one that uncovered it. And people ended, ended up spending time in jail for what they did. But I, I want to make sure that something like this, with not the right checks and balances in place, that there's more than one way to go with a, with a, a incident or a suspicion of an incident. So it, it's it's something where one one watches the other rather than everything in one basket. And that's when you open yourself up to you know whether it's a scandal, whether it's money being taken, whether it's you know improper investment, you know. It, because you have to have checks and balances to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen. If you don't put the checks and balances in place before you um, institute something like this, you're gonna, not that we'll pay for it any, because maybe you'll never will, but you take away the chances that it could happen in the future. Thanks. Mayor, just to speak to that, I, I totally agree with Mark. And my, the heading for my bullet points was structural deficiency. I don't want the council to consider the fact that, let me back up, I feel we have a very high performing organization. We have a very good organizational <laughs> culture that starts with the mayor, hopefully I have a hand in that, the trust and faith of the council, and all of the staff, including the present clerk and treasurer. I wouldn't be, I, I'm talking about this as a manner of public policy and in a manner of structure for the city, because these faces are going to change, they definitely will. I appreciate the, the, the fine words and, and all that, but we're not doing this, we're not bringing this forward now because we have a really good thing right now. This is something that is, is, is in the best interest of the community in the long term to make this change. Uh, and that's why we're bringing it forward. So just wanted to clarify that. I do think there are those checks and balances. Our auditors look for those checks and balances, balances especially in the, uh, the areas of comptroller uh, and treasurer. Uh, and the separation of duties there, so we we can we can improve upon those, and and we will we will look to uh, you know to maintain those. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just add my two cents very quickly, and I don't want to be repetitive, um, but I've had the pleasure to serve with both this clerk and treasurer for quite a while. When you get elected and you get up here, I would say many people in the city don't realize how important their responsibilities are, and. Uh, some of the aldermen touched on it, if not the city administrator, just put this up for anybody to be elected, to come in and only have the criteria of being a city resident, doesn't cut it. These two positions carry a lot of responsibility and weight. So I do believe this is a responsible way to go for the future. Uh, regarding Mark, he's absolutely right. There should be checks and balances. We can take it under consideration, but to Andrew's point, this ain't like a structural thing. This is more of a responsible thing going forward. It's always the responsibility of the mayor and the council to 
be the checks and balances to what goes on here day to day, but maybe not manage it day to day. So we will take it under advisory, without a doubt. We'll confer with um, with our legal and, and everybody and uh, see the best route to go, but I do believe this is the way to go. So. No further discussion? Motion on six, please. Yeah, we'll move to approve Charter Ordinance Number 15 relating to the manner of selection <coughs> of the City Clerk and City Treasurer for the City of Oak Creek to repeal and recreate Section 2.41 Sub C to repeal Sections 2.41 D and E and to create Sections 2. Point uh, go ahead. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. Four <laughs> Sub D and E of the Municipal Code. Mr. Kelsgrill, second. Before we vote, um, we would like uh, a statement read right into the. On behalf of Barb Guckenberger, the city treasurer, and myself as city clerk, um, we are officers of the city, the city treasurer, and city clerk's responsibilities are governed by Wisconsin State Statute 62.09, sub 9, and sub 10, respectively. The selection of our positions, whether by election or appointment, has no effect on these statutory duties. It is our understanding that upon fulfillment of our terms in April of 2021, the transition would be for the mayor to appoint the current city clerk and city treasurer with confirmation by the city council. Thank you, Catherine. And I forgot at the public hearing, actually, too. I don't know if that was the appropriate place. But either way, I did want it read into the record, so I apologize for, for the lateness of that. But we do have a motion and a second. Um, roll call. Oh, who's the second? Then? Yeah, who's Councilor Dave? Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kierkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dufnack? Aye. Okay. Uh, moving on to item 7, it's consideration of Ordinance 2955, confirming the adoption of the settlement agreement between the City of Oak Creek and Labor Associates of Wisconsin and fixing the salary for members of the association for the year 2020. Andrew? I can handle that one, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we have in the city of Oak Creek two collective bargaining units, one in the police and one in the fire, but we also have this post Act 10 labor association that also has a opportunity to meet with the city management, actually the personnel slash bargaining committee. You guys get a new name at, at bargaining time. Yeah. So we'll call you personnel slash bargaining. And we, we did have an opportunity to meet with the law group. Uh, since Act 10, the the parameters of discussing wages with this type of non-public safety entity or association is limited strictly to wages, and it's, it's limited by a CPI factor that's determined by the state. For, for agreements, settlement agreements beginning 1-1 of 20, that CPI factor per the state is 2.07%. We met with the group uh, last week and had a, had a good conversation with them. And we did, as a group, personnel committee did recommend to the council that we provide for the base wage increase of 2.07%. So that's kind of step one. Step two is the budget you just adopted and the recommendation uh, that, that was contained therein was a base wage adjustment for all non-represented part-time and full-time staff of 2.25%. That matches directly with the collective bargaining settle wage settlement for 2020 of 2.25% for police and fire. So everybody in the organization is looking at an across the board increase of 2.25% with the exception of the 45, 46 members that make up the law group. So what we suggested to the personnel committee was a uh, which were lim were limited. We can't do a base wage increase greater than two point zero seven percent, even if we wanted to. What we offered up uh, as a discussion point and a recommendation was a one-time payment of one hundred and twenty-five dollars to help at least normalize the twenty twenty uh, wages uh, for everybody in the organization, as opposed to treating one certain group within the organization separate than or. Uh, different than, than the others. That's what's before you this evening. That was what the was recommended in the uh, bargaining committee, and we'd be happy to see the fiscal impact there. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions or, or help facilitate <coughs> any discussion along those lines. Anybody? 
just just to add that. Andrew nice job uh, just to add the one time 125 per employee is a non beast but which will not apply to future contracts unless negotiated or, or decided by the city any other questions a uh, comment just yeah. as a member of the personnel committee um, in our discussions with the law group um, and the wage increases they were very happy with what we presented to them so building employee morale is not a bad thing and it doesn't come at an incredibly high cost either so uh, they certainly were happy at the end of our discussions no further discussion motion on eight oh, I'm sorry motion on seven I want to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2955 confirming adoption of the settlement agreement between the city of Oak Creek and the Labor Association of Wisconsin of Wisconsin and fixing the salary for members of the association for the year 2020. Kuzikowski I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tolman. Aye. Item 8 is consideration of a motion to approve the 2020 regular combined common council meeting dates. Uh, yes, please, Catherine. You want to elaborate on that? Certainly. At the November 5th, uh, 2019 common council me meeting, um, tentative 2020 common council dates in a schedule was presented to common council with a recommendation to vacate the August 3rd meeting. Uh, so this is just um, confirming that schedule by common council request and it does include the vacating of the uh, August 3rd meeting. Um, it, would, it would have been August, would have been, okay. right with National Night Out, it yeah. would have been a Monday meeting. Okay. Questions regarding the calendar? I think we took a look at this two weeks back. Seeing no discussion or questions, motion on eight please. I'll move to approve the 2020 regular combined common council mm. meeting dates. Guzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Item number nine is public works, and it's consideration of a motion to approve the purchase of the Henderson Infini salt brine system from Casper Truck Equipment. Uh, Ted? Sure. Um, <clears throat> This is actually something that was discussed during uh, uh, CIP uh, or CEP. And um, uh, basically what this does is it uh, allows uh, the salt to act a little more quickly. Uh, we would also have the ability with, with this to pre-treat the streets, which would give us a little additional time to get out there. Um, uh, not saying that would be lollygagging at home, uh, but uh, what would happen would be cars wouldn't be sliding all over the road in the time that it took us to get out onto the streets. <laughs> so it would uh, allow us a little extra time to, to get out there. And that, uh, I mean, this is kind of something that uh, we've been looking at for the last few years. Um, I had said at one time before, I, I wasn't really big into the gimmicky stuff and, uh, uh, that's why you haven't seen me uh, looking to buy uh, a lot of the cheese brine or, or uh, some of the things like that. That you know, I mean, uh, other places are trying. Uh, this is getting to the point where this is kind of tried and true stuff, and uh, I believe it works, and I think it'll make us a better operation for snow removal. Ed, questions for Ted. I'm Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District, and I know we've had significant discussion about this system. And are there other uh, communities in, in our area that use this salt brining system? Actually, right now, Franklin is using it, and, uh, and South Milwaukee is uh, looking to purchase a salt brine uh, system. Uh, you'll see them almost everywhere nowadays. Uh, when you go down the roads in that before, like a snowstorm, and you see uh, lines on the road, uh, that's the, they're pre-treating with salt brine, and we'll actually be doing that uh, once the system is up and running. Now, are we aware was this, is the city of Franklin more happy with with the system and the way it's used? They are. the The one that actually kind of sold me on it was the city of Racine. Uh, we went over there, and they've got uh, quite a bit bigger operation than we do. 
and the public works director there um, uh, was one of the ones that kind of sold me on it. He said that they have seen a reduction in their salt by um, about a third. Thank you, Ted. Steve? Alderman Krakowski, uh, First District. Ted, what's the, uh, we're going to pay, spend $157,000 is going to come out of the stormwater increase there, the $2, right? Is that how we're paying for it? Um, yeah. I Brid believe Bridget's majority, nodding her head. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. What's going to be the annual operating costs for the system, and how is it going to be paid for? The annual operating cost is is, I mean, other than if you had to fix the system or something, is pretty minimal. Uh, you can make about five thousand gallons of of brine with one one bucket of salt. We're buying the salt anyway. Uh, that's just the rock salt that we put down on the road. Uh, that and tap water, that's that's what this amounts to. And then uh, basically the machine will, uh, I, I mean, it. you tell it based on what the temperatures are and that, what the salinity of the water is going to be. Basically all this is doing is spraying salt water on your salt, which helps activate it to work quicker than it would if you just put it out on the road dry. So the cost will be the salt that we're already buying, and which 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 means we'll be buying less of it. Hopefully, if it works right. Hopefully, and yes. then you're using the water tap water tap yeah. water to, to make this thing run. Correct. Okay. And we're adding this to existing trucks. Uh, we already actually have on probably about eighty percent of our trucks pre wet systems that we use for calcium chloride. This would use the, the same tanks. So as opposed to putting calcium chloride in those tanks, uh, which is very corrosive and, and you know tough on equipment and, and the roads, uh, and it's not very friendly to the environment, we would be putting salt brine in it. Okay. Make the product at the garage, fill the, fill the tanks, and the trucks go out with the stuff in the tanks. Correct. Okay. And I'm sorry, I did forget. What's the expected useful life of this piece of equipment? 10 years, 15 years? I would certainly hope that we would have this for at least 15 years. 15. Okay. Andrew? It's a quick uh, comment question, Ted. We spend about $326,000 a year on salt. And if we experience anything like some of our counterparts, our, our colleagues are, experiencing we stand to gain maybe ninety to a hundred thousand dollars a year say say of ninety to a hundred thousand dollars a year in salt um, with the exception of some minor maintenance you know uh, I'm sure the utility will charge us for their tap wa our, our water like everybody else does uh, gets charged you know I think we're pretty comfortable there that even if we're not quite as successful with it as other communities that we're, we're, we're standing to gain tens of thousands of dollars a year in savings for the taxpayers so um, and a very quick payback of less than two years if we really knock it out of the park, but call it safely two to three years. You know, that's, uh, just wanted to acknowledge that that's, you know, really, uh, it was really great that you went out and, and researched this and and really, uh, I think you're really going to bring home some, some good savings and a, and a project that really pays for itself really quickly. So I appreciate that, Ted. Yes. I just wanted to mention that as chair of the CIP, you know, we were really impressed with uh, the information you brought to us about this because this really, again, talk about the extra mile we go and the value that we're bringing to the citizens. So I think I think it's going to be a really a home run. Well, I, th I think this is, a, this is a very easy decision, uh, not only for the cost savings but for the safety of the community, especially with the pre-treating <clears throat> availability. Uh, we have actually a pre-treating uh, system for our home. So a very easy decision. Mike. Okay. Um, I'm not voting on this one, but yeah, this is a no brainer. Uh, this stuff has been proven elsewhere. If we do save the 30%, it's less salt we put down. Um, it's pre treated, it works faster. That makes it safer for residents and people traveling through Oak Creek. And somebody mentioned the environmental impact. The less we put down, the less environmental impact there is to, to the rivers and streams and everything else going on. So, um, very easy decision, I think, without a doubt. And seeing as we get snow at Halloween now, hey, <laughs> we got to stretch our, our salt as far as it can go. So, Steve? One last point. I, 
we were just we, we've been briefly discussing the merits of the program but uh we just have one vendor on our agenda that we're going to buy it from was that the only one that uh uh kind of had a, a system or uh, how'd you come up with this this place no actually um this is bid through uh uh, the source well, uh, and actually this used to be the National Purchasing Consortium. They changed their name to source well, kind of like, you know, we're sourcing our stuff well. Uh, and this is, a, well, <laughs> that's, that's the name. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so uh, I mean, this has all been bid out. So there's other vendors that, that would carry this. They would all be the same price because it was all pre-bid. Uh, this this um, company that we're going through, uh, Casper's Trucking, uh, they had one that would be available um, the first or second week of January. So we wanted to jump on it so that we could actually use this equipment this year. Uh, otherwise, if, if we had a, maybe went with another vendor, they would have had to order it and it would have had to have been built. And, uh, and we might have been seeing it in March, you know, which, I mean, we maybe could have got one or two snows out of it, but maybe not the half of the winter anyway. All right, thank you. No more discussion. Motion on nine. Zagalski makes a motion to approve the purchase of the Henderson Infinity Salt Brine System and Casper truck equipment for the amount of 157,058 and 86 cents. Go a second. Roll call. Alderman. Excuse me, Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Item 10 is engineering and its consideration of a resolution approving a stormwater management practice maintenance agreement with Ryan Business Park LLC. Further, Ryan Business Park located in the south project located southeast of West Ryan Road and 13th Street. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. This is the um, <clears throat> typical, typical agreement that we require uh, for sites that are developing and <clears throat> um, have a stormwater uh, management plan. And uh, generally that is um, uh, storm sewers, ditches, and um, then detention ponds that, that catch up runoff and in in lease it at a, a regulated rate. And these facilities need to be maintained and this agreement basically assures that they will be maintained by the property owner uh, or his representative. And if not, then the city can step in and do the work or hire a contractor and charge the property owner for that maintenance. And so um, recommendation is that uh, this agreement be entered into. Any questions for Mike, engineering-wise? Dukeniak, 3rd District, this has nothing to do with the stormwater management agreement. Um, just driving by that area on 13th and Ryan, I know I have a number of, of constituents in, in my district. When uh, when will that that building be fully operational? When will, when will things be, be moving over there? So the last I heard, I took a tour probably a month and a half ago, they will be looking to occupy, and that's a loose term, because occupy means beginning to move stuff in sometime around July, August time frame. And that could take as long as upwards of five to six months to fully stock the building. I think in the immediate, and, and I asked for this from our project partners in the field and in the, in the business park partners, I've asked for a graphic of what the roadway conditions will look like in terms of lanes open and, and, and things like that once they have to shut down meaningful construction on the roadways for the winter. Uh, so I, I will provide that once I, once I get that, just so we can see what the traveling motorist and, and traveling public is going to kind of contend with and see. Uh, I don't think there's going to be too much switching of lanes and those types of things in the winter months. Uh, it will be pretty well. Once it gets set, that will be what it is for the winter. Uh, but certainly it's still going to look, uh, there, there's going to be orange barrels there. And it's it's gonna gonna be Mike. You'll, you know this a little better than I do. There's a, there's I think that pinch point at the southerly quick trip is going to be maintained where you have to kind of jig jog back. I, I think I don't think they're going to be complete with that by the time uh, by the time yep, winter kind of shuts. You're correct. Up. It's gonna it, I, I my impression that it's going to look 
pretty much like it looks now, which is much better than it was in phase one when the traffic was running on the old road. Right. Those lanes were coming apart. They were very narrow. Uh, so it's much better now. Um, but a Andrew's right. You, you can't get by with that. They, they they're not going to get it done with, with, the, with the weather that they have uh, and the work they have in front of them yet. So they're going to get it, uh, pretty much stabilized work as, as long as they can. Okay. Uh, but then, then it's a matter of maintaining the barricades and the barrels uh, through the winter. And With the significant road work that needs to be done, is it safe to say that they won't be fully operational till 21? Uh, I mean, if we're talking about the road, no, the road will be completed in, in 2020. But the building, uh, like like Andrew had uh, said, they they want to start. Uh, they want to start uh, getting in the building, uh, uh, getting uh, all their equipment up and running, and of course, then also uh, stocking the uh, the facility. So uh, that would be then twenty twenty one ish. Probably shooting for the end of twenty. And that's the last I heard. So thank you, and I'm sorry to get us off point. No, thank you. Yeah, I was about to say, getting back to the agenda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, just very quickly, though, this is for a stormwater best practice maintenance agreement. Uh, just to reiterate what Mike said, these are put in place to assure that water runoff because whenever we do development, one of the biggest concerns for the neighbors or anybody else is what's going to happen as we put these impervious surfaces in and buildings. This helps guarantee what our studies show. So thanks to engineering. So. No other discussion. Uh, motion. Thanks, Mayor. Just a clarification. So this should be listed as a fifth district. With that said, I'll move to approve resolution 12107-111919, approving a stormwater management practices maintenance agreement with Ryan Business Park LLC for the Ryan Business Park project located southeast of West Ryan Road and South 13th Street. Mr. Gauss-Gill, second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Kufniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. And item 11 is consideration of a resolution approving the Parterre at Emerald Road Development Agreement for the design and construction of public improvements for the apartment de development at 8001 South 6th Street. Mike? So this is the development agreement for the apartments that are under construction right across the street from, from the library. Uh, they have been working for the past uh, two months or so on uh, excavating for the foundation, and now I see foundation walls are uh, starting to be erected. And so um, we got a little behind on this one. Generally, we would have this uh, agreement uh, signed uh, back at the start of the project, and uh, recall there were uh, delays. And um, uh, then as that fired up, then we had to quickly kind of get this uh, worked out with the developer, which, we, which we've done. And uh, so the agreement covers their responsibilities, obligations for the public infrastructure needed for the development. And uh, they are relatively um, uh, uh, small compared to what you would normally see related to developments, because th those would include public water main, um, uh, sanitary sewer, uh, roads, and, and, and lighting. And, and really all this covers is there's some storm sewer that they need to put in, very little. Um, and then they need to uh, do some restoration on, on the adjacent uh, public infrastructure that they are now disturbing. The sidewalk is gone along 6th Street. Uh, they are uh, disturbing the terrace area, which is kind of that unique um, uh, brick pattern. Um, and then, of course, they've also disturbed uh, the Dale Richards path uh, on two sides into uh, Emerald Preserve. Um, there's also some sensitive... Uh, uh, bioretention plantings so we needed to cover that uh, in this agreement uh, to make sure that that's going to get uh, restored to pre-construction conditions and um, this agreement pro provides for that and it also allows that the development will pay for city time for the inspection on, um, on those needs questions comments on 11 Seeing none, motion. Oracle move that the council adopt resolution number 12108-111919, approving the parterre at Emerald Row Development Agreement for the design and construction of public improvements for the apartment development at 8001 South 6th Street. 
Dupniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Dupniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Item 12 is the license committee, which I'd like to turn over at this time, Alderman Kirkowski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I assume everybody has received and reviewed the uh, license committee report that was in our common council information tonight. Does anybody have any questions, cares, or concerns with what is listed? Okay, hearing none, Kurkowski will make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the November 19, 2019 license committee report. Yeah, second. Roll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Duknia? Aye. And item 13 is consideration of a motion to approve the November 13th, 2019 vendor summary report. Everybody please take a look and can direct your questions or comments to those at the front table usually. Josh, you're Rick. ready? <laughs> Are no questions or comments? I do. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah. Alderman Krakowski, first district. Item fifteen is that is that the cost of We Energies, including the monthly the uh, the monthly bills that we pay, plus the work that was done at the thirteenth uh, and Ryan. I completely overlooked that. I guess I can handle this one, and I'm not at the front table. Uh, this is a this is a Ryan Business Park cost. Uh, this is for relocation of utilities, and you'll recall I covered this uh, discussion we were having with We Energies about uh, whether the utility itself would be responsible for relocating, i.e. it was a public project, uh, or whether it would be a private on-site development cost. And actually, through a negotiation, uh, this was the result that was the public portion. However, the city will be reimbursed this amount through the Ryan Business Park escrow agreement. Uh, that was set up in that development agreement. So we're not out any money, but we are the, the payee up front to, to begin with, lack of a so better term. $315,644 is the amount of the relocation that we will wait and hold this check until we've received um, the check from Ryan Business Park. So they've already been invoiced for it. Oh, thank you. Difference between the 315 and 325 probably being some metered service that's also on top of that. So I know you gave them a different number there. So, okay. If nothing else, uh, motion on 13, please. It will move to approve the November 13th, 2019 vendor summer report in the amount of $833,519.26. I'll get second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tolman. Aye. And just before we adjourn, a couple public service announcements. We do have our turkey trek going on uh, day before Thanksgiving, which is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Day oh, it is Thanksgiving Day. Is that the? You'll be at us. You'll, you'll be at a, at a meeting that we have that morning. The day yeah, before. Yeah. Actually, it will be a meeting, but it is out <laughs> right in the preserve. Please bring a non-perishable. For those less fortunate, we will be collecting that. Uh, starts 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. At least I got the time right on that one. So uh, I would have been all by myself. Also, our um, our Christmas uh, display is out there in, in the main lobby. And this year, you can stuff a stockings for senior. It's part of the spreading holiday cheer. And there's also cookies for canines and felines. So you can pick up the stocking. Uh, there's a list of items for seniors less fortunate in the Oak Creek area. And also you can collect for the pets if that is your choice. Um, is that it? That is it. So um, on behalf of the Common Council and myself, wish you all a happy holiday and motion for adjournment. Kowski, you make a motion to adjourn. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Thank you.